Hello, welcome to another episode of Snail Mail with Smokey. I hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. This is episode eight of Stamp vs. Stamp. Now, if you're new to my channel and you're not familiar with Stamp vs. Stamp, let me explain it to you. Stamp vs. Stamp is a monthly collaboration that I do with that dad guy. So there are two videos that we release simultaneously. I release a video, that dad guy releases a video. They have very similar thumbnails, so they're easy to spot. So please do not forget to go check out that dad guy's video, like his video, subscribe to his channel, uh, put the bell icon on so you know when he has future videos. Rob does videos about philately, about post-crossing, about his life in, in Canada, um, Lego. He does lots of great videos and he has lots of content and I know you're going to enjoy that. So please go check him out. And if you're new to my channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And thank you very much for doing that. So like I said, this is episode eight of Stamp vs. Stamp. Every month, Rob and I challenge each other in some kind of crazy field tell it challenge uh, in order just to, to bring some, some fun and some levity uh, to the hobby, but also uh, it's a chance for us to learn more about each other and to learn more about stamps that we might not ordinarily uh, come in contact with. So this month's uh, video uh, comes from a suggestion that was given to us by Stephen. And so Stephen, thank you so much uh, for the suggestion. And so here is the premise of today's stamp versus stamp episodes. Rob and I have been tasked with picking one stamp. That's right, just one stamp. Usually it's five stamps or 10 stamps or a group of stamps. But today our focus is on one singular stamp. And that stamp has to be a stamp that we would not want in our collection. So we've got to choose one stamp that for whatever reason we would not want in our collection and then we're going to explain to you why we wouldn't want it in our collection. Now, just to keep things interesting, after we do that, we are going to reverse roles and tell you why we would, in fact, want to include that stamp in our collection. So this is going to be a, a great episode. I'm excited to see what Rob comes up with. And so I hope you'll stay tuned for this episode of Stamp versus Stamp. Before we get started and I reveal the stamp that I've chosen for this Stamp versus Stamp challenge, I want to share with you a bit of a story. Now, a couple of years ago, I watched a YouTube video and it really had a profound effect on how I collect stamps. That's right, just one video. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even one video. It was just one conversation contained inside of that video. Those of you who are familiar with philatelic channels here on YouTube are no doubt familiar with exploring stamps and hashtag philately. Uh, those channels ran uh, by Graham Beck, who does a phenomenal job. Uh, Graham has produced some really high level videos with lots of content, uh, lots of interesting and educational material. And I recommend his channel uh, to anyone, whether you have just started collecting or you've been collecting uh, your whole life, please go check out Graham's channel. Uh, there's a link to it along with other channels that I think you'll enjoy in the description of this video. So on an episode of Hashtag Philately, uh, Graham was chatting uh, with a gentleman named Samuel West. Uh, Samuel West is a British actor, and he's also a stamp collector and a philatelist. But more interesting than that, he is a collector of one specific stamp, and that is the two shilling blue stamp issued by Great Britain. That's his area of interest. He's, he's got a very specific niche and a very specific area of interest that he collects. So while they were chatting, Samuel tells a story uh, about one day he's at an event, he's, he's having a conversation with someone, and the topic of stamp collecting and philately comes up, and the person says, well, how many stamps are in your collection? Now, as I recall, Samuel says he paused for a minute, and he thought to himself, and in himself, he kind of thought, that is not a question uh, that one stamp collector would ask another. How many stamps 
are in your collection. And then he began to ponder again some more, and he figured out that what this person was talking about was an accumulation of stamps or things versus a collection of stamps and things. And so this realization really got him thinking uh, about what is the difference between having an accumulation of something versus having a collection. And so this is, this is what really changed me uh, as a philatelist. Uh, Samuel West goes on to say in this conversation with Graham Beck that right then and there he determined that what defines a collection, and that is a collection is defined by what is left out. And, and so I thought that was such a, a brilliant way uh, of defining what it means to have a collection, whether it's, it's stamps or, or cars or, or baseball cards or whatever it is, but that your collection is defined by what is left out. So in other words, as individual stamp collectors, we are the curator of our own museums. Now, as the curator of our own museums, you and I have the privilege, the honor, and the responsibility to decide what is in our tiny artwork museum and what is not. There is no way that any of us stamp collectors could ever collect every stamp that has ever been released throughout the history of philately. Number one, uh, there are some stamps where there's just one. So we all can't have them. There are some stamps that are priced uh, so astronomical that most of us common collectors could not afford. There are stamps that are scarce. Uh, and we couldn't house such a collection. Uh, logistically, it would just be a huge undertaking. So as collectors, we all have to decide what we leave out. And so many of us do the opposite. We say, okay, what am I going to let in? I'm going to collect long-necked animals. I'm going to collect churches on stamps. I'm going to collect stamps of, of King George VI. I'm going to collect stamps of Elizabeth II. Uh, I'm going to collect stamps from the micro countries of Europe. And so we say, these are the things I collect. But in doing so, we're also saying, but I'm leaving these things out. I'm choosing not to bring these things in to my collection. So like I said, when I... When I Watch that interview that Graham Beck did with Samuel West. It really got my brain set into motion. And it, it, it now this is going to sound crazy, but it almost gave me permission uh, to know that I don't need to collect every stamp. And not only do I not need to collect every stamp, I don't need to collect the way that everybody else collects. Uh, Stamp collecting and philately is an individual hobby. We all share the love of stamps, we, whether it's, it's the artwork or the history, uh, learning more about countries and peoples. We all share this, this broad umbrella, which is philately, but then we all have our own area of it and we all express ourselves inside our own area. So you may like to collect stamps that have butterflies on it, and I don't. So your collection is a bit different than mine, and my collection is a bit different than yours, and that makes everybody's collection unique. And if you ask me, that is a great thing about philately and about this hobby that I am so passionate about. So now to the challenge. The challenge is this. I have to pick one stamp, any stamp in existence in the world, that I would not want to have in my collection. And then I have to explain to you why I don't want it in my collection. And then I have to flip the tables and tell you why I might want it in my collection. So when you think about stamps that you don't want in your collection, it may be very easy for you to think, oh, I don't want this, and I don't want this, and I don't want this. Uh, but this is one that I had a little bit of difficulty narrowing down narrowing down every stamp uh, that I've seen and that I know about to just one stamp uh, that I don't want in my collection. So I've stalled enough. Uh, let me show you 
the stamp that I have chosen that I do not want in my collection, and then I will explain to you why. This is a stamp. This is Scott number 1986. It was issued by Great Britain on September 4th, 2001. It measures 30 by 41 millimeters. It is from a series of stamps that celebrate the Punch and Judy show. So why don't I want this stamp in my collection? Well, I got one word for you, and it is a long word, and here it is. <laughs> this word here is the term for a fear of clowns. Uh, the definition of this word is a specific phobic disorder that causes anxiety, uh, nausea, and sweating when a person sees clowns or clown images. In layman's terms, y'all, I'm afraid of clowns. I do not like clowns. I know clowns are supposed to bring you tons of joy. They're supposed to be uh, friends to everyone, especially to children. They make balloon animals. They do tricks. They, they pop out of vehicles, and, and they do all kinds of crazy stuff. But clowns give me the creeps. Yes, I start sweating. Yes, I get nause nauseated. Uh, yes, I want to run the other direction if I see a clown coming. Um, it's just a fear that I have and that I have always had. But I didn't know that I always had this fear. Uh, not until I was probably 9 or 10 years old. When, when I was a young man, there was a very famous circus here in America that was making a, a tour uh, through the United States, and they were stopping um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was not very far away from where I lived, and my mom, my mom thought it would be such a wonderful experience if she bought tickets uh, to this world-famous circus, so... Uh, my sister and I could experience the animals and the acrobats and and the ringmaster and the lights and the trapeze and the clowns. And so months in advance, mom purchased these tickets. She said, "I'm taking you to the circus. It's going to be a great event. We'll we'll have dinner. We'll see that it'll be it'll be amazing." And I was like, "Yes, let's go. There's going to be there's going to be lions and there's going to be tigers and elephants and and trap there's going to be all these wonderful things." And so we went to this giant giant arena in Tulsa, uh, presented our tickets, and, and I remember this. It, it was this traumatic for me. As soon as we went to find our seats, I looked up. And I was walking this way toward my seat. And like I said, there's, there's thousands of people at this event. I'm walking this way toward my seat. And coming this way was a clown. I immediately froze in terror. I started sweating and started shaking and ran in the opposite direction. Now, I'm not sure what happened after that. But I do know that my mom calmed me down. I know that we made our way back to our seats. And I do know that we stayed uh, for the entire performance of the circus. But I've got to tell you, I didn't enjoy it because everywhere I looked was a clown and I was keeping my eye on them. Uh, I have not been to another circus since. And I don't imagine that I will ever be uh, at another circus. So just for the fact that this stamp displays an image of a clown, I don't want it in my collection. So now to turn the tables. Why would I want this stamp in my collection? I had to do a lot of thinking about this and, and such an interesting twist on this challenge. And so let me start with the fact Let's look at the stamp. Number one, I love stamps. And so any stamp that, uh, that I come across uh, that I like, that I think is, uh, 
is pleasing to me. I pop it in my collection. And a lot of the stamps that I have in my collection have bright, bold colors and bright, bold imagery. Uh, that's one reason I collect cartoons on stamps. Uh, not just because I like cartoons and superheroes and that thing, but I really love the bright, bold colors and the bright, bold imagery. That's that's why I'm 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 drawn uh, so much uh, to to cartoons on stamps, uh, to Van Gogh uh, artwork and things like that. It's just the the imagery I really love. And this stamp has all this. This is a bright, bold image with bright, bold colors. Um, and so that fits a lot of criteria of, of something that I would normally, without, without a doubt, just upon first seeing, I say, yes, I'm going to buy that stamp uh, because the imagery is so bright and so bold. Uh, the background, orange is my favorite color. And so once again, because it's a bright, bold color and it makes a statement. And so um, if, if it's a stamp and it's, it's predominantly orange, it's probably going to be in my collection. Uh, so that's two. That's two reasons that I should have this stamp in my collection. The third reason that I should have this stamp in my collection is where it's from. It's from Great Britain. Uh, I probably sound like a broken record, but uh, my ancestry is from Great Britain. Uh, if there was one place on the planet that I could visit, it would be Great Britain. Um, I just, I love everything about uh, the people and the land and the culture. Uh, I enjoy watching British TV and British movies, uh, the British baking show. I watch it all and, uh, and I really, really enjoy it. And so that bleeds into, into my, my philatelic life. Uh, I collect a lot of stamps uh, from Great Britain. I collect stamps from Great Britain, uh, specifically stamps that have King George VI on them and Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, and so this stamp does that. This stamp was issued uh, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, it was issued in 2001. And so for that reason, it should be a shoe in uh, to go into my collection. So there's three reasons. Uh, if that's not enough, I'll give you one more. I collect cartoons on stamps. And sometimes it's not just cartoons, but it's imagery maybe that was uh, th that looks a bit juvenile, that looks a bit childish, that looks like it wasn't uh, professionally done. And, uh, and, and this stamp looks like a cartoon to me. Uh, I know these things are, are puppets or marionettes or whatever they are, uh, and, and that shows on the stamp. And so this would easily fit into my album of cartoons on stamps. It would easily fit into my, my album of British stamps. It would easily fit into my album of Queen Elizabeth II stamps. And it would easily fit into the my Just Because I Like It album because of its bright color and design. So that's it. If there was one stamp that I would choose not to have in my collection, that's the stamp. And those are the reasons why, and those are also the reasons why I would add it to my collection. Once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment. And also, don't forget to go check out that dad guy's video and give him a like and leave him a positive comment as well. As far as that dad guy goes, Rob, thank you so much for once again collaborating with me on this video. It was such a blast. I look forward to these videos each and every month. And uh, this one was fun. Uh, it was, uh, we had to do a bit of thinking and I like that. Uh, so many times we focus on mini stamps, but just narrow it down to one stamp. Um, it really made me think and I think it was a fun and interesting challenge to do. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And until I see you next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.